everyone it's Ronke <laughs> I am sorry. I know there's been a while I made a video and I've been very unserious. Um, I apologize. I do have excuses. I just hope they are good enough. <laughs> I was busy with school and work and you know, since it's the videos, most of the videos I make are of me talking. They're of me explaining stuff. So I usually have to like you know do a lot of research just to make sure that i wouldn't be teaching rubbish <laughs> or nonsense um and that's one and then the the powerpoint they take a, a they take a while like i have to put the tone mark since the keyboard is in english and most of the yoruba words need you know the the tone marks and the signs and all that they, they do take a while because I have to like use codes and all that just to just to get the just to get one Yoruba letter so sometimes just thinking about making a PowerPoint puts me to sleep like that just drains all my strength just thinking about it so I think time has been a barrier I apologize but now that I'm done with my school session I'm going to make uh, more videos hopefully Okay, so before there were clocks, before the churches came and they, you know, fixed the bells and uh, people were able to tell the time through the church bells, um, at the very beginning of the, the, the times, uh, the Yoruba people had ways of telling the time not as specific as we have now um not you know by the minute um but by the section of the day so you know they had their periods and um and yeah they did have their ways uh, of describing time uh the midnight they call the midnight Ogojo or Oru or Aji. Um, the times that you know the the the, the skies, how the skies looked like, uh, what the how bright the day was. Um, what animals were present, um, not roaming around the streets at the time. Nature itself um, told the time. So, between the time that we would not refer to as 12 a.m. and, and between, three, uh, between 12 and 3, uh, they called those times Ogonjo or Oru or Aji. Then between the times that we would call 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, they call that, uh, that you know, period Idaji or Afemoju or Aferemoju. And how would they know when it was Idaji? When you want to meet with someone and you tell them, um, Pademi ni, ni abegi ni daji. Meet me somewhere under the tree. Um, at dawn, how would the person know that? I mean, without a clock and all that, how would they know that it was Idaji already? The clocks will begin to crow. They usually crowed like three times or something or, or more before daybreak. So, around the first cock crow, you would know that, you know, the Idaji had begun. Um, it's all, it's always around 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. The current time we have now, although that didn't exist then in the villages or the communities. So the cock crows and the, the brightening of the sky, at least the, the sky would stop being the pitch from, would stop being pitch dark to, to a lighter form of, 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 uh, dark. So that's how they knew when it was idaji so um overall that's morning that's sunrise overall 
or ya letter or kutu kutu. Now let me let me mention that sometimes they would combine two of the of the words that are listed here. Um but you know it it was still the same idea. So someone could say or gonjo or oru aji. And someone could say i daji afere moju or afe moju daji. They could combine words. Right here someone could say right around the stand someone could say oru kutu kutu um early morning or something. So they once a word was present, you had an idea. Um so around the time that we we'll now refer to as 7 a.m. Uh, to 11 a.m., the sun usually, you know, made them know that it was morning already. Uh, oh, so yes, the sun. Then, or sun gogo, or ojo kori, or idaji ojo. That's the afternoon. That's the the midday. That was the midday at least. Maybe that will not necessarily apply now. Maybe the midday right now will just be 12 p.m. or thereabout. But that was the midday then because of what the skies looked like. So, Osan Gongo Ojo Kari or Idaji Ojo was the midday. So, if you want to tell someone to meet you, you know, at midday or in the afternoon, they basically just had to look up um, or come out of their homes and look out. And the the weather itself, or why do I keep saying weather? The the environment, nature itself, will tell them what the time was. Then around three p.m. to five p.m. our time, our present time that they did not have then, uh, they call that period ojoro or irole. So, you know, the skies stop being the afternoon bright stop being blue um began to become a darker shade of blue and you know night began to fall usually at this time the birds would um well starting from around five onwards the birds would begin to especially the bats would begin to fly back to their nests so that was another indication that it was evening um so a jaro or irole then yes the, this was the time when all the bats began to fly back to their homes when you know it began to get dark dusk late evening so they call this period ashale or ale so Ashale or Ale, that's that's the you know the period. That's what 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 that was the that was what they called that period, the dusk. And then between nine p.m. Uh, to ten p.m. our time, uh, they call that period. Oru, they would say Nigba Tojoban Rebiano. That is when when the when the day is leaving when the day is becoming over and the, the skies get dark again uh meet me somewhere or i'm going to do this i'm going to do that so oru right now yoruba people would refer to oru as like 12 a.m uh or or something they don't usually call 11 p.m oru because of the you know the technology and um and all that like nothing feels like night anymore like there are lights in the street and people can manage darkness so this is not called oru anymore really but back then when they did not have power and they had to rely on the light torches the atukpa and all that they refer to this period as Oru. So, um, what did the people do? Between 
sunrise and sunset of course they were the sun determined when it was time to work um, usually in the afternoon they would still be working of course they would eat and do all the stuff in the evening they would play games or take palm wine or have fun um, and then in the in the nights in the late evening sorry they would um, in the alley usually the grandparents would tell stories and and they would just have fun so this is you know basically how they they told the time back then before there was a clock so enough of that um let's move on to how we measure time now so time was and is still being measured i mean we have progressed from the days of just being able to tell the time by, by the skies we now have specific time periods like you can now count seconds and all that so time was and is now measured in seconds which we yoruba people call ishejuaya so ishejuaya is second uh, or seconds because the plural of second in yoruba is still second it's still ishejuaya so minutes isheju hours wakati days ojo weeks or say months oshu years or do um just just like everybody else i mean we the old world is now a global village everyone now measures time the same way so yes this this is it this is how we measure time now okay so i'm going to talk about the the calendar um the yoruba calendar has a four-day week the the calendar is called kojoda in yoruba um that is may the days be clear or clearly foreseen so if someone asks you what do the yoruba people call calendar it's called your dad. the yoruba calendar has a four-day week with 91 weeks in a year so before we began to use the you know seven day week with 52 i guess uh, 52 weeks in a year with the 50 something weeks in a year um our calendar how we measure days was you know by counting a four day week with 91 weeks in a year uh the yoruba year begins from june 3rd of a gregorian calendar year to june 2nd of the following year so we never really celebrated um the beginning of the year at january january was just another month so so yeah and you know what <laughs> my birthday is june third so back then um being born on the third of june i would have been celebrated um like in a big way i would have been called you know a biodun someone who was born um at a festive period or something but no the time changed so i don't get to be called a biodun but anyway yes uh just to throw that out there this gregorian year the year 2016 a.d is the 10,058 uh, year of the yoruba records of time so when the yoruba people began to count time um was like 10,058 years ago uh that's a long time ago <laughs> So as a result of the British colonial and European cultural invasions, the Yoruba people had to adjust to the Gregorian calendar. I talked that. Therefore, the Yoruba people have measured time in seven days a week and 52 weeks a year since then. So on the first day of the week, um, which we don't know, you know, the actual day that it, falls in like the very first time they began to count the years the day sorry ten thousand and fifty eight years ago we 
don't know if it fell on a Monday, our own Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, a particular day, we don't know. But we know that this is how they did count the time. So on the first day, uh, the day one, people who you know, worshipped Shango or, or Yah would worship their God on this day. Um, so if you were from, like, how do I explain this? The, the first day was like your own current Sunday now, if you're a Christian, or your Friday, if you're a Muslim. It's not like on other days they don't, you know, make sacrifices to them or make contact with them or something. But the actual day for worshiping them was on the first day. So on the second day, um... They worship on Rumila, Ifa, Ishu, and Oshun. Let me let me put this out there. They all worshipped all the gods in one day or the other, but they had their own special gods. Like you would worship all the Orishas, but you would still Orishas, but you still you still have your own special Orisha that you worship majorly, like mainly. So they would worship these Orishas on Orishas. Why do I keep why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Why did I say Orishas like like an European? They were watching these Orishas on, on the second day. So on the third day, Ogun, um also see and and on the third day of Batala, Shokbono, Yami that's Yami Oshuromonga, which is not my yeah by the way. And the Egugus. So this is what they did. Okay, so let me talk about the days of the week. Um, like I said, we have adjusted. We don't measure time by the four-day week anymore. It's now seven. So this is how we measure time now. So Sunday, we call Sunday Aiku. So what's Sunday in Yoruba? Aiku. Or Jo Aiku. And I'll explain why it's called Aiku. Um, this day is also known as Ojoisimi, the day of rest. Historically, it was the day that Orisha Orumila buried Imi, the mother of Oshuodara. The people begged that they live forever and they made supplications to Olodumari through Orumila. But the request was obviously uh, you know, denied, not granted, um, because no one lives forever. Your bad people used to make sacrifices against premature death on this day, especially for the Abiku, Abikus, the children who belong to cults in the underworld who die many times and return to their parents just to frustrate them among all the reasons. So when we adjusted to the European calendar, this is what we did back then or still do. It, I mean, if people amongst people that that still worship the Orishas, this is what they do. I, I don't know if they still do this strictly, but this is what they used to do. Okay, next point. Um, Monday, Monday is called Aje. That is Ojo Aje. You can or you can just say Aje. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, I did make some repetitions on this point on this. You know, point. Please do forgive me. It so this is the first day of the business week, the most important in regards to wealth acquisition. Um, if you want to start a business on any day at all, advisably it would be a Monday because that's the day that Ajay um, wealth came to you know manifest itself on earth. So. So this is what they believed in and what they still believe in. Um, you don't want to sell on credit on a Monday or something or the early hours of a Monday. So yes, Ojoaje Monday. And then Tuesday, Ishegun. So Tuesdays are called Ojo Ishegun. 
and of course i'll tell you why this is the day of victory and glory the day that wars were settled and evil powers or forces are overpowered people who did new things that gave them better lives on this day so you know people would celebrate the success of uh, a particular spiritual victory that they won or just victories from wars or or, or you know that's why they call this day or joy shegun and you know people made their prayers and stuff for victory over whatever might have been affecting them wednesday or joy uh, wednesdays are called ojoru we're called and are still called ojoru and i will tell you why historically speaking um the yoruba people believe that this is a very evil day um that problems and confusions and chaos usually come into the world and went into people's lives on this day although they might not necessarily manifest themselves like you know a bad spirit might just begin to reside in your home might not necessarily cause confusion in your home but this is the day that they would come so people did pray um whenever they celebrated victories on tuesdays when they offered prayers they would usually pray ahead for wednesdays and then wednesdays too they would still pray and try to spiritually ward of any forms of evil by appeasing their wishes so yes, Wednesdays are usually a bad day. Um, where Thursday or Jobo? So Thursdays are called or Jobo, and of course I will tell you why. This is the day in which the names of the days arrived. So, um, you know, on what day did they? The day, they know what to call the older names. Was it Thursday? um what other things used to occur are probably still occurring uh, on thursdays dead ancestors or relatives um were said or are still said to visit the families their families on this day and people would conjure their spirits just to greet them and seek advice from them or basically listen to what they have to say so important festivals that are related to ancestral and deity worship begin or began on this day so you know if you want to start a festival or something you would start on a thursday because on this day you would be having a lot of ancestors and you know ghosts running around the streets trying to catch up on all times with their not running around the streets not like you can actually see them running out around the streets in the physical realm but they would be out there looking for their family members um and of course, they would be conjured and and all that. This is what used to happen. They could be demons. Um, it, it, it's deeper than that. But historically speaking, historically speaking, a lot of spirits used to come out. Good spirits and bad spirits used to come out on Thursdays. Enough of Thursday. Friday, Etty. So, Ojo Etty is called friday friday is eddie yes i said that um it is not advisable to start anything serious on this day it was not advisable and it's still not advisable of course i mean some things never change if you want to start a business why would you want to start on a friday like it's almost close to the weekend if you want to open a shop don't open it on a friday um because it was you know coming close to the end of the week so they believe that if you started something serious on this day it would fail without a doubt this day is synonymous with postponements as people postpone serious assignments to other days on this day um Etty, if you start something on Etty, Oma T, as in it will not be, it will not flourish. Let me put it that way, it would not be successful. So, you don't start anything on a Friday. I don't know if that still applies now. This was, you know, how the societies were run. Of course, please, uh, 
by all means start your businesses on on, on a friday this was just how it was done and saturday a bameta a bameta i'll tell you why i might not necessarily have an answer to why it is called a bameta but i'll tell you some some things about a bameta saturday so people are dressed friday and saturday the same way as they share the same attributes you don't start anything serious on a friday you know nothing serious just have fun and all that so so yeah and elders were never buried on saturdays back then okay so that would be the end for now and you know usually I did mention that uh, festivals would begin on Thursdays. Usually they would run till about uh, Sunday before the work week began. So people would do everything they had to do on Fridays, all their festivals and all that. And it would usually run to Sundays. But of course, big festivals were not, you know, on every weekend. So people still did work, still went to their farms and stuff like on all days it didn't matter but they had specific you know functions for each day that i just briefly mentioned i don't like know the details um many of those that lived at the earlier spirits especially when the times first changed many of them are dead so so i'm hoping to get viable sources but these are stuff that i'm sure of okay so I'm going to teach you a little song uh, just to help you remember the days. Um, it's the day of the week song and here it goes. I ku aje i shegun o joru o jobo eti abameta. I ku aje i shegun o joru o jobo eti abameta. I ku aje i shegun o joru o jobo eti abameta. So don't don't forget just in case you want to learn them by heart. Let's talk about the months. Um, I won't show you what do the months of the year. The first month is called Shere. So they call January Shere. And then Irele. Irele is February. So Shere Irele. January, February. Um, I'm going to try to talk about, speak a little about what they did on February. They had the Olokun Festival. And then Ereno, that's March. March is called Ereno. Then Igbe, April. Then May, Ebibi. June, Okudu. And then July, Agemo. Going to August. Owere. Owere is September. October is Owawa. Some people say Owaro. But it's either of the two anyway. It doesn't matter. Owaro or Owawa. Um, that's October. Then November is Belu. Belu is November. Okwe is December. So December is okay. So yes, I would teach you a song as well. I just don't have, you know, a PowerPoint that contains all of the months. But I'm going to teach you a song as well that will help you to remember the months. Share a relay, a reno, e baby, be a kudu, a gamma, a go away. Oh, wow, a So if you want to remember the months, probably through a song. 
you can sing share a relay no eek baby be o ku do i get my ogu on where oh wow i be look but i'll go one more time share a relay no eek baby be o ku do i get my ogu on where oh wow i be look Let me run through Pokemon.